So we're really delighted to be joined by Nick Drake uh, this evening with us. Um, Nick, thanks so much for coming. Nick is the Associate Vicar at Gas Street Church in Birmingham and a uh, songwriter, uh, worship musician, pastor, theologian uh, who did uh, research into the theology of singing um, and, and what we do in our worship. We're, we're super delighted that you're with us to talk a little bit. In a, in a few moments time, John's going to be uh, continuing our new sermon series on Ezra and Nehemiah, but we wanted to pause and take this moment to think about what was going on uh, when Zerubbabel begins to lead the Israelites in this, in this restored worship together. And uh, my inspiration for this little conversation that we're inviting Nick on really was this passage in Ezra chapter three, where um, uh, the Israelites return from exile and they're back in Jerusalem and Zerubbabel has rebuilt an altar and they offer uh, their first little bit of worship together. Uh, and it said, and of course we couldn't do this now in a time of physical distancing, but it says uh, that they all took their place to praise the Lord as prescribed by David, King of Israel. And with praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord. He is good. His love towards Israel endures forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. No one could distinguish the sound of the shouts of joy from the sound of weeping. And that passage really struck me that the Israelites had lost something about how they worshipped together. And now they were rebuilding and restoring and regaining something about how they worship together. And we just wanted to explore that a little bit with you. Um, and in this season of lockdown, this time of being out of our buildings, what have you missed most during the season of lockdown? I, I, think, um, I think people have adapted to the technology stuff. You know, generally now we, we've, we've adapted to Zoom, we've adapted to video and, and, and being together, but being geographically distant. Um, but still, nothing compares to, to physical closeness does it and face to face and I think I think certainly for us at Gas Street that's what we've missed uh there's that sense and the longer it's gone on for mm. uh the longer that I think it's a it's a, it's like the groaning of the spirit almost it's that groaning in creation itself that you share in that lament slightly like oh this is okay but it's not quite what it could be or what it should be or what we're designed for and I guess humans can adapt but ultimately in terms of our flourishing there is just something about face to face um that is so important that that we just can't do right now and haven't been able to do and and um uh you know we're we're, we're looking at acts uh 2 42 to 47 this sunday and um those marks of the early church and and and, and you could summarize it in one you know sentence basically being together, you know, being face to face and, and gathering around, you know, eating, i.e. like table fellowship, like Jesus at the center and, and that memory of all the times he met with people around the table of being at the heart of worship. Mm. And I think that's the challenge. And that's the thing I think we're all missing, aren't we, um, in this season? Two of the core Christian worship practices, singing and communion or Eucharist, are the two most yeah uh dangerous things for passing on the virus and i think you know it's an unprecedented challenge for the church and uh, so it's been fascinating to to kind of observe and also be within because those of us are different potentially different ends of the worship spectrum like pentecostal charismatics those who love singing you know and spend a lot of time in singing have got the same problem mm. as 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 more traditional eucharist centered worship so it's a shared, shared problem. Um, singing is, is um, something that people of God have always done. So when, when we go to the Bible, you know, often uh, your first reaction is, oh, well, I, I can't think of much singing in the Bible or, you know, there's so many other things that are in the Bible. But actually, when you start looking in more detail, you see that people of God singing so much throughout Scripture and particularly seemingly at key freedom moments. And again, that's something that resonates in the wider culture. You know, um, Hong Kong uh, in the last few months, you, know, you saw that singing in the streets breaking out. Uh, apartheid South Africa singing, 
uh, racial injustice being exposed at the moment, singing on the streets is one of the things, you know, the hallmarks. So there's something, I think, in, in the nature of what it is to be human, of how God's created us, that is to do with being free. And being free means you sing. That's right. Um, so I, th- I think there's some answer around that with singing that, that um, and even Paul links it to being filled with the spirit, you know, yeah. be filled with the spirit and, and sing. So it kind of expresses freedom, but it also leads to more freedom. Mm-hmm. I, I think, think in some way. I think you put your finger on something else then, Nick, as well, in linking it to the idea, like how it's used in like the, the protests around social ju- uh, racial justice or how it's used in Hong Kong or apartheid. There's something about singing being an expression of hope hope for a better yeah. world. Uh, so it's almost like freedom and hope, which are such you know, central principles for us. What do you think then about, I mean, how, how, how can Christians keep going with um, their own personal worship and devotion at this time? What are you finding helpful for your own personal pattern of devotion? Um, I, I and, and like John, um, I think we were talking just before this, you know, music for me, uh, uh, for John, you know, and, and I know you, Graham, as well. Music's always been a key thing for me, for my expression to God, my my participation in in who He is. So, um, and as you can see, the piano behind me here, like I, I have the luxury of like a kind of study and music room all in one. And so, um, I, I find um, music and worship at home just so important. And and just just sometimes, you know, I've just played without any words you know just to play just to to have even five minutes to just just express something um it it is key for me um but also staying staying involved in people but you know i'm in a small group Mm -hmm. uh, we do every tuesday night on zoom and again there are times i'm sure all of us were like oh i don't want to do you know (laughs) i'm i'm so maxed out of, of zoom or whatever but every single time you come out of it like, oh, I'm so refreshed, like to, to have prayed with people, to have had people pray for, for me, you know, to, to share burdens and stuff. Um, and then simply uh, the, the, the age old stuff of just spending time in your own Bible study. You know, I, I, I've been doing some, some deeper reading of Revelation. Um, I, I just getting into that. Um, and I have seasons where I do more Bible in a year, like bigger chunks of reading. But right now in this season, I felt actually, no, I just want to go a bit deeper in, into bits of scripture. And, and just because part of all this season has been un, trying to understand what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone's trying to understand what's going on. But, you know, the only place we truly get that understanding is, is going deep in scripture and, and get, getting that God perspective. You know, something I wanted to ask you, Nick, is, is what, you know, uh, I guess we wanted to ask you that question of what you thought was next for the church. What what's going to come in this new season? What do you feel like? And I know I'm not asking for a big prophetic moment here, but what what do you feel coming for you guys at Gas Street? You as a family, you as a, um, mm. as, a as a leader. What what do you feel like is coming for the church? I think um, I think um, I think there's incredible opportunity with incredible challenge. Um, I, as I said, I think I think online church. You know five ten years ago it was like a technical theological debate <laughs> it is church can church ever be online is it truly church personally i think yes <laughs> like i mean it has to have been it has to have been for this season and it's a really interesting uh theological thing because suddenly praxis like what you do is your theology yeah so we're, we're doing it so it's not even a question anymore <laughs> i mean it just is church. Now, obviously, that's problematic because, well, if the Church of England, for example, defines church as a communion-centred uh, reality, then, well, then none of this is church. So obviously, that's, that's one challenge for uh, traditional church and Church of England for us. <laughs> um, um, but I think there's tremendous opportunity because I think it's thrown the church more into the public space. It's, it challenges the notion of buildings which Jesus seemed to challenge as well. Um, it, it forces us out there. It makes church and talk of church more normal, I think, you know, with our neighbours on our street here. It's been, it's been so much more easier and normal to talk about church and prayer. And um, so I think it's a, a tremendous season of opportunity. 
but huge challenges, particularly financial, uh, with the economic outlook. How how that how will different, especially again, Church of England diocese, some with more wealth than others. How how will that play out? Mm. Um, I know here in Birmingham that's a big issue. Um, it already was, so now it's even more so. Um, yeah. So I think there I think there are some challenges and opportunities and also obviously um now as well with with the with the kind of deepening of awareness of the racial injustices that are systemic uh, here in the uk as well as us that's a huge challenge as well so it's, it's like a season like no other um i think for the church opportunity and challenge and again for gastry that's why we're about to launch an axe series because that's what you see in acts or through you know opportunity challenge and even in the challenges even in the prison moments come greater opportunity mm. which is interesting again and in, uh, to, to track through mm. one thing i would love uh, to ask you nick uh, and and you as well graham is what practical things could everybody listening whether they're a worship leader musician or not um what can what can we do to worship at home what can we do to stay focused on god um, and what can we do to, to deal with the fact that we're not going to be together um, for, for a, a few months? Um, and I think one of the things that Christians can be doing is recovering the practice of lament a little bit at the moment. And by that, I don't mean kind of feeling horribly miserable about stuff. Um, I think one of the things that lament does is it, it expresses what is lost that we long for. Um, and in doing so, it helps us understand what we truly value, what we love, what we desire, uh, what we appreciate. Um, and of course, we know it's, it's like a, it's a spiritual principle of the Bible to practice gratitude, to practice thankfulness, give thanks in all circumstances. Um, and actually, the very nature of lament is that it helps you focus on the thing that is lost that you love, the thing which uh, you value. Uh, I think of, um, you know, Psalm 37, how can we sing the songs of Zion in a foreign land? Uh, and there's that little bit of a kind of, oh, we yearn and long to be together, shouting, singing the praises of God as, as one people. Uh, and, and the very fact that we can't, we've lost that, helps us realize how much we, we long for it, we yearn for it. But it also points us forwards towards what we hope for and, and, and what, we, what we work for. So I think lament is part of that. Um, uh, that, I mean, that's great. And I, I, again, I think just to return to what I said before, I, th I think getting, um, getting our eyes into scripture, um, uh, you know, again, I've been, as I said, I've been studying Revelation and, and the one commentator I was reading said, you know, John, John, John could have given the churches he's writing to any number of visions of Jesus, like stories of Jesus that he knew, you know, Jesus on the beach, you know, cooking, you know, G Jesus walking on the water, Jesus, you know, any number of stories from Jesus' life, but what he what he gives is the is a vision of Jesus as he is now, uh, the, the heavenly ascended Jesus, and and that that's what he felt the church is in lockdown in a sense, in, for a different reason, in persecution. That's what they needed, and they needed that because it lifts their eyes. Yeah. to the one who's overcome the one who's victorious the one who's going to restore all things through him in him by him the victorious lamb mm. the, the 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 way to win is by losing yeah. uh that the way of the cross is the way and i think that is the key thing for, for us at the moment for, for the church the big church you know all of us is like fix our eyes on on him mm. and draw strength and resource from him who's overcome mm. and that's always the message but I think we, the temptation in lockdown, the temptation in all that's going on is to have our eyes just down on the ground and on the next step, the next day, the next thing to do, the next challenge. And, and there's something about getting into scripture that lifts our eyes, uh, lifts our eyes up. And worship is the key way to join our hearts to what our eyes see in scripture. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the key thing, that it doesn't just stay in the head, but it, it drops to the heart. Uh, Nick, thank you so much for your time. It's been brilliant chatting with you. Um, <laughs> really, thank you for having me. And we'll have to figure out how we edit and what we do <laughs> with this to make something as very exciting. But really great, uh, really good to talk with you. And um, give our love to everybody up there. Yeah, yeah, pleasure. Well, thanks for having me, guys.